another hill and sometimes a mountain and another road with rocks that hurt my feet but if Jesus walks along beside me I can take it there shall be no I could scorn by a neighbor whom I treasure. I've been deceived by a friend who I held dear. So many times I just wanted to give up. Then I remembered my Lord was right here. Jesus walks along beside me. I can take it, there shall be no retreat. Well guys, welcome to Montana Haven. I hope you enjoy this. This is, as you probably know, this is my father, Ora. This is my mother, Orpha. And this is my second oldest sister, Leona. And uh, Dad wanted to do this little song for you. When we were growing up, Dad, Dad would have us always sing together. And so this was one of the songs that we, that we sang many times together. I made plans for myself and for others. Many things I wanted so to do tomorrow. Disappointments turning out to be the hardest leaving me with just a little more sorrow and another hill and sometimes a mountain and another road with rocks that hurt my feet but if Jesus walks along Take it, there shall be no retreat. Tonight we're going to share a little bit uh, more from Dad's story. You're going to hear a little bit from Mom, and Leona's probably not going to be here, but uh, she wanted to join in uh, on the song. So I hope you enjoy this and. Uh, Welcome again, and let's get started. This time we wanted to get mom in the video, and as you can see, a lot of you had questions uh, why mom wasn't in the video last time, and, and dad can explain a little bit too, but um, mom's getting kind of old and older and a little frail, and she's a little hard of hearing as well, so it's a little har hard for her to understand when we're talking with her and asking her questions, but we did want to ask her a few questions, and I'm going to try to ask mom a few questions, and she might... Um, we'll just see if we can, if she can answer some of the things maybe from her past. Uh, my mother was, is an amazing person and it's just that she had some, she had an accident. She fell, uh, what was it, a few years ago now, Dad? Mm -hmm. And she broke a uh, bone in her neck and she was in a neck brace for quite a while. How long was she in a neck brace? About two months. Yeah, two months and it almost did her in. It was, it, she couldn't lay down. It was so, it really aged her a lot. Um, so mom has recovered largely from that, but, um, so we're going to ask her a few questions and, and go from there. So mom, you, you grew up in a big family. Um, yes. where did you, what age did you come in of the children? I was the oldest child. Yeah, mom, you were the oldest. And how old were you when your mother passed away? 15 years. Yeah, 15, 15 years old. And you were the oldest of how many in your family? 14 children. Oh, yeah, 14 children. Seven so. boys and seven girls. Okay, seven and seven. And how old was the baby? When my mother died. She was just a little baby. Okay. Roma. Okay. That was the youngest. Okay. And then with, in time, your dad remarried. And then how many, how many were all together? Uh, 23. 23. 23. 23 children. 
So it was uh, mom's, uh, mom was the oldest, and then uh, 14, and then your dad remarried to a widow, and it was five, is that right? Five in, in, uh, six, six, uh, six that he had? Two, five. Five? And then they had more children together. Anyways, there was 23 altogether. Yeah. So, and you grew up in what state? Where did you grow up, up in? What part of the United States did you grow up in? Indiana. Yeah, Indiana on a farm, right? Yes. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about how you grew up or when you were little? Well, I was the oldest child and there was two boys and there was Beulah. We never, she was never normal so we always had to stay at home with her. Uh-huh. We couldn't take her to church. And then Abula passed away. How old was she when she passed? My mother. Beulah, your sister. Uh, I think she was 14 years old when she passed. Okay, 14. I thought she was older. Okay, I didn't know. Okay. Anything else that you have memories of growing up on the farm? It's so long ago, right? There's always so much to do. Yeah. But then we, when my mother passed away, one of her, my first cousins came and lived with us for about eight years. And she said, like, well, Tope, I've worked for you so long, but, but one of my sisters is getting married, I guess. I'll just leave it here. And, then, but then uh, Grandma and Anna came and helped a lot too. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing a little bit, Mom. I might ask Dad some questions now. Let me just explain a little bit here. Uh, we had we had tough two years. The last two years, she first fell and broke her like Joseph was saying. She broke a bone in her neck. And they couldn't find it, but she broke it at about 11 o'clock, and we took her to the hospital, and she couldn't, they couldn't find the broken bone till about 5 o'clock. And they did, took some more x-rays, and they found they weren't going low enough, and there was a lower bone, and they didn't catch it. And then, so after that, we knew what it was, so they put her in a brace. She was in that brace for approximately eight weeks, and it was an eight long weeks. Yeah. And she kept getting weaker and weaker, day by day, and finally she, she quit talking, uh, uh, she quit talking, and then, she, but she got, she got better again. And so we were just so thankful that she got better. Then, before she was too, uh, too, completely recovered, she fell again and broke her back. So she had, then that was, now she had to stay in her chair too for, for weeks on end. So mm -hmm. it was, it was tough. Yeah. So now I feel so thankful that she's here and she can actually recall some things that she couldn't recall just a couple of weeks ago. So she's getting better and better. So I, we're we're just so thankful for that. And she is she is still my wife and always was and always will be. And we still appreciate yeah. it just as much as ever. Right. It's very so, good. So that's that's all I got to say right now. Yeah. We used to sing a lot together when we were going, when we were teenagers and, and after, before we were married, whenever we went someplace, we started singing soon after we let, went, got on the buggy and didn't quit till we got there. So we had just loved to sing. And, but now she's kind of in a place where she can't sing very much at all. And, but I still miss that and a lot of other things I miss too, but nevertheless, and we're still thankful for where she's at right now. She's, she is still recovering day by day, so we're just blessed to, to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Well, Dad, that might lead us into the next question: Is okay. how did you, how did you and Mom meet? You want to talk about that? Be good. Yeah, how did you first meet Mom? Well, see her? it was a long time ago. We went, to, we lived in the same community, in the same church district, till I was ten years old, and my folks moved to another place, out of their church district. For the first 10 years, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, communication. We were sure we met a lot, 
every week for that matter almost, but uh, there was no nothing special that happened there. But then after we were uh, moved away and little, we were a little older, uh, th th things started to come together a little bit, and we were went to school in two different districts, and uh, in those days there was uh, softball games, the comp competition from school to school. There was a schoolhouse about every two miles, and the people mostly walked to school at to begin with, but then later on there was a bus. But but anyhow, we had uh, played softball, and they came to our school first to play softball, and and she was a scorekeeper because her uh, our uh, girls were all playing ball, and we didn't have enough boys, so she was scorekeeper for both teams. So that kind of got me to. To kind of uh, go over to her once in a while and check check on her, see how everything was going on, and if everything if, if we're still on the same page. So that was kind of the first uh, the first experience we had together after we were moved away after we was ten years old. But then a little later, my uh, her folks came to our neighbor that had an auction, and and so she invited. Her mother invited my mother and family to come over for a noon meal and for a noon meal and a visit. And during that time, uh, we had uh, some connections, and we I think we were about 12 years old at that time, and we still had still did some. Uh, she, 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 we ate together at the same table, and she was where we could easily see see each other, and we it snuck some. Uh, direct contact with their eyes every once in a while whenever we think nobody was looking. So that's kind of the first real contact you made after the, after the softball game. And then, and later on, we had German school, and we both went to this German school for a, for a session during the winter time, and, and we, we played games during the noon hour and the recess, and we played some old-fashioned games where it's Farmer in the Dell, which is an old McDonald song, and most of you probably know how that goes, but then it, you, you became it every once in a while, and when you were it, you had to choose a partner. And we both chose each other when it was our turn to be a partner, so there we had some connections again. And then uh, when we were at her place, uh, when we, they were invited, we did, did get some more contact than just uh, uh, just eyeball contact. We did some uh, obituating and we l l learned to, uh, that we were kind of on the same page for a lot of things. But then later on, uh, as time went on, we had, uh, I, I, went, I was in service at this time and I came home and I decided I'm going to see if Orphan might be at home, we went to church first. And well, then let's talk about that. So, what okay. Dad's explaining there is, um, was it? I think we've mentioned this. By the way, if you're since you're watching this, uh, this is, I guess we could say part two. Uh, I interviewed Dad a while back, and a lot of you enjoyed that. So, you wanted more. So, we said we'll do another one. But we may have talked with through some of these things in the previous video. So, forgive us if we're repetitive on that. Um, but we, I wanted to talk, ask Dad about the, this being a civil servant. That was through the, in the Korean War, is that right? Yes. And during that time, uh, the Amish were known as conscientious objectors. They didn't feel like they, they wanted to go to war. They were conscientiously opposed to that. But they still served their country, and they, they uh, were called civil servants. So, Dad, you worked in a hospital, and uh, worked in a hospital for two years during that time. Yes. Um, yeah, in Indiana there. Uh, so this was the time. So Dad, what, what, how old were you when you went to civil service there? I was 20 years old. 20, so you were from 20 to 22 years old in the hospital. Yes, I went in 1954, came out in 56. Okay. So, so yeah, two years there. So anyway, so this was the time. This was now, uh, sounds like Dad and Mom were a little chummy in their younger, <laughs> younger days. Or they... They knew each other in school early on, and then uh, they met each other, you know, through the the youth. And then now, Dad's talking about when he was in civil in, in civil service. So, go ahead. Okay. Well, one one Sunday that I was off, I 
I went home and went to church first. And then after church in the afternoon, I went to see if Barbara might be at home. There was no communication. We didn't, we didn't have telephones. We didn't, there was no way to communicate except through mail. And I didn't write her as I'm coming, whatever. I just took the chance that she might be home. And I, so I went to see her. She's about five or six miles from our place. And This was with horse and buggy. Yeah. So, uh, so I knocked on the door and one of the girls came to the door and so I asked her if Orpha might be at home. She said, yes, she's here. Then Orpha came out and she invited me in and, and she asked me if I had supper and I said, I didn't come for supper. I came, <laughs> came to see you. Well, so I, I, I told what I'm, what I'm doing. She knew that too. Then she said she's going to talk to her dad about this and which is always what she always did when she had to make a decision to do something. She, wanted to get the advice from her dad. So she asked the dad, uh, I told her that I'm here to, to see her and and what do you think, what, how should we handle this? So she, so he told her, why don't you tell him to just stay here, don't go to the singing, but just stay here and and we'll we'll visit here in the, in the living room together and then I'm going to give you some t time too to be, be, be by yourself if you want to uh, be yourself for a while. That's that is good too. So as he came and told me that and said that that is fine. That'll suit me just great. So we went. We did that. I stayed there at their house and then went to the living room. We had a, a great visit. It was just just absolutely amazing. And they, uh, his her dad, just welcomed me without a question. It was asked me some some great questions and we got along really good. And so anyhow, after that, after we were going steady together, and I told her that was probably the biggest, best, the best date I ever had in all my life, you know, because it was we were serious about the things, and and everything went well from there on. But we didn't get married then until uh, about a year and a half after that, because things in our culture, things have kind of take, they got to take their course. They don't make any reservations for for the people that want to get married. They think about the the what they've got through for their to make the to get the the wedding ready and all those things. And in the meantime, her mother uh, got pregnant and then she had to wait till for the baby to arrive. So there goes another ten or about another year, you know. So it it drug out. So anyhow, that's the way that went. So dad and mom had to wait a long time. It sounds like yeah. It seemed like a long time, anyhow. So that's the kind of way it went. But it it was all worth waiting. We didn't uh, we didn't panic. We didn't uh, accuse anybody or didn't say it's why does it take so long. We just we just accepted as it was. So one thing that Dad I remember Dad saying that one reason they had to wait so long is because so uh, the wedding is always at uh, in traditional Amish uh, communities is always at the the bride's place right yes yeah so the Amish don't have church houses so it's always in the home so or in the barn and if they have a barn loft or something but it was was it where was it was it a tent outside or in a it was in the a, house in the house okay that the house was pretty big you know with yeah. all those children um, but they but they wanted to wait until it was their turn to have church so the Amish take turns and they go from house to house and there's so much work to get ready for church they said well let's just do the wedding at the same time right the same week or whatever, mm -hmm. so they had to wait till the turn came around, you know, to the church at their house, so that then everything was clean. They'd have to do it twice, so that's another reason. Right. Yes, that's correct. Mom wants to say something. The morning of our wedding, it was like fifteen below zero. How how much below zero? Well, when I woke up, it was seventeen below at four o'clock, and the wind was blowing hard. It was a cold. It was in January. <laughs> Our it was January, yeah, it was January the seventeenth, and it was seventeen below when I woke up. I, my brother and I went. No, her brother and I were at the place where we got married at, which was down the road, uh, down the lane from from her folks's, where the reception was. See, this the reception was at one place, and the the marriage ceremony and the uh, introduction, whatever, was at another place. Just down the, about a quarter of a mile, so uh, that's where we had the wedding. The wedding 
actually. So did people like, walk or did they hitch up no, and they drive had, down there? Had, okay. We had people hitch the young folks hitch up the bogies for the okay the, for the married ones that okay. were at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the. That's cold in Indiana. The wind blows. That's really cold. <laughs> So as I mentioned in the other video, and I'll do it as well here, um, there's this book that Dad wrote, and I know quite a few of you have uh, ended up purchasing it uh, on Amazon, or I think maybe Barnes & Noble's carries it. I'm not totally sure. Yes. Okay, Dad says yes, and so it's called Growing Deep Roots. And anyways, Dad wrote this book. It's just a collection of stories, and he's writing another one. So at some point, we'll let you know when that one gets uh, gets published. It could be a little while yet, but he's actively working on that one. Uh, but anyways, I'll have the link below in the description box. So if you guys want to get this book and read through a lot more stories of, that Dad has, it's, it's, it is on Amazon, or just go on the link below, uh, and I'll have that link there for you. And you can click on that and uh, be a few books left for you So on Amazon, I'm sure. So... Uh, this was some of the stories from Dad and Mom, how they met growing up, and we'll see if Dad has a few more in his sleeve. I think he wants to talk a little bit more about Vernon. So Dad and Mom had two children that passed. The first, Their firstborn son was a stillborn due to horse and buggy accident, and then Vernon uh, also passed away from horse and buggy accident at age nine years old. So Dad and Mom both knew tragedy, and mom's mother passed away when she was 15 um, also at a tragic in a tragic way so um, they had their share of, of sorrow and uh, this was all in Indiana at, at a large Amish community in LaGrange County Indiana and then in 1976 you moved to Montana we moved yeah in 75 we moved 75 to Montana. okay I can't okay, remember yeah, which year yeah. I moved from Indiana to Rex from Florida. Right, yeah. yeah. In 1975. So that's when I was born, then in 1980. But anyways, it, this the two sons passing, this all happened in Indiana. So did you want to talk about that a little bit now, Dad? Yeah, I, I, yeah that's what I was going to say. We can talk about that. Uh, see, this is what happened. Uh, our son, when he was born, I knew that something was wrong when they... See, he was born at a hospital, and I went in, uh, they told her I can come in now, and when I got in there, I knew something wasn't right, because I heard him breathing very hard. This was when he was born as a baby. Yes, when he was a baby, I heard him, when I come in, they was breathing hard, and there's two nurses there trying to, to see if they're, they're trying to get the mucus out of his his throat, but they couldn't do any, make it any better. So, uh, after a while, uh, she just kept on doing this. We didn't say I didn't say a word to her. She didn't say a word to me. We just just stared at each other, so to speak, and knew that something serious was wrong. So then the nurse came and said that the doctor's coming in shortly, and he will tell you what the next move is. So he did come in. He was very nice, and he was very very polite. And he said he's getting a point with a with a, a specialist in Fort Wayne Hospital for the next day if if mom is way able to go, you'll go the next day with him. And so we did. We went the next day and got there and then and he had he took him them him away for uh say probably uh, forty five minutes to an hour. We thought it was a long time, but just about an hour I guess. And then he brought him back. Then the doctor said this he was also very kind, very understanding and he said he he came to tell us what we I'm sure we had all already concluded anyhow, but he's gonna tell us that there's nothing that they can do for him. He'd have to have an operation, and he could not stand the operation. Therefore, you'll have to let him uh, take and let him go back to where he came from, and he'll be don't have to struggle anymore for for breathing, and he'll be much better shaped place than he is right now. And he was very good about that. And but so we just took it to, uh, at, at face value. And he said, take him home and enjoy him while you got him. He might live the whole day and maybe even the whole night, but not much, probably not much longer because he's, he has to struggle too hard to get, to get uh, the, the breathe that he won't, he can't possibly to last more than a day or... Now, at that time, didn't they have oxygen? Was there... They didn't, well, it was more it? than oxygen. He just, okay. he couldn't, his trachea wasn't developed enough. He said, this is what he said, and the trachea 
it's supposed to be kind of like a radiator hose. It's, it is, it's flexible, but yet it is uh, rigid. Electric. Rigid, yes. And, but this here is like, in our terms, it's, it's like a gunny sack. He knew, we understood a gunny sack, but he didn't give the, the real name for it. It wasn't rigid enough. You couldn't get yeah. enough air through it. So he, had, he said he got to work too hard to get air. Uh, he can suck it in. He can blow it out, but he can't suck it in. So uh, that's what his problem is, and, and we can't do anything to it. So he said you just have to take him back to where he came from. But we took him home, and when we got home, there was a neighbor there that came, and he said he understands our problem. We have a problem with our, our baby, and he's got a machine that they used him. He had, he had a son, too, that had some problems, and so he, got, he went to a certain doctor, and he, he had the machine, so he bought this machine. It's electronic, but he had to, he bought a generator and he had it all hooked up and he's given this treatments every day uh, for, for a couple months already, but he said it's helped his, his son. He said he, he, has, he doesn't know whether it would help our son at all or not, but he, he said you're willing to come bring him over if you want to, if you think it's, it might help, we can't tell you it will, but in case you, you're just free to come and bring him over if you want to. So we decided... We said we got nothing to lose, so we took him over there, and so he lived the next day and the next and the next, and so we kept ta kept taking him over there, and he still lived, and 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 he took a lot of care, but he he just he just lived, and it was really hard for him to, to take food in or to, to nurse because he couldn't hardly nurse and breathe at the same time, so we had to get the the kind of Milk my, my mother and and give it her a teaspoon so she wouldn't he wouldn't have to choke. <clears throat> so we did that for a long time, and and at about four months or so, she took him along to church, and then that was the last time she took him to church because it 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 was so hard on the women to hear him work that hard to get air that they she didn't take him any, any another for another six months or so she didn't take him because the women couldn't handle it. So anyhow, uh, we kept taking him over there, and, and finally he did get a little better and a little better, and and when he, he was good enough, by the time he got old enough to go to school, he actually went to school. And about in the second grade, maybe even the first grade, one day he came, one day he came home and said, Mom, today I, I ran and I didn't even get tired. So we knew that he was on his way to recovery. and. He was almost recovered, and then at last something happened that he, we uh, we lost him. Then when we thought we had him saved, then he then we lost him. So that's that's just God's way of of what it, at, at times, and it just it was a it was a test for us. But nevertheless, uh, we we just left it at that. All his all his life, he never cried. He never had made. He never cried, no matter what, what happened, he didn't cry. But that was because, we figured at least, that was because he couldn't cry when he was younger because he couldn't cry and drink or... or couldn't cry and breathe same at time, the same breathe time. As, yes, Marva said, Orpha said, he couldn't cry and breathe at the same time. That's exactly right. So he, he, he quit crying, so he'd get air. Mm -hmm. And that was for years, but not years, but it was for a long time. And so... He never cried till he was almost nine years old, and when we when he passed away, uh, and for a, an accident, uh, I'm not. I think we went through that once before. Yeah, so we talked about to, that. I, but I want to say this. Maybe I'm not sure this went through or not. But anyhow, uh, when when there was a funeral, there's 800 people gathered there for the funeral. Yeah, anyhow. Uh, and then Orpha came to me and said, you know, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I cannot cry. I would so much like to cry with the rest of you, but I can't. At any rate, uh, so I told her, just, just be content. Uh, we understand. Uh, you took care of him all these years. And you see, you saw him suffer. And he couldn't cry, therefore you can't cry either. Because you're so so glad he he come through this, and he's in a better place now. But anyhow, it was 
really sort of, sort of strange that she went to the funeral and never never had one teardrop. Although it was just as hard on her as it was on me, but in a much different way. I think that's about all there needs to be said yeah, about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I know a lot of you have, uh, you know, mentioned you've lost spouses and lost children, and I know that, that many of you have experienced the pain of loss so that you can understand, you know, what dad and mom went through and what they're still experiencing. I don't think that pain ever really leaves you. Um, it never will be fulfilled until you see them. That spot will never be healed, you know, completely until you see them in eternity one day which we're confident, we can be confident that we that we will. So that is something we have to look forward to. I never met him, so we did name our oldest son uh, Vernon as his middle name. So that's Justin Vernon uh, in honor of my brother Vernon. So a little side note there. There are so many things I could talk about. There's about comments. We want to kind of hit some of those, but, but it, it's just, to, we've spent, 45 minutes already or something like that, and I don't want to make it too long. I'm going to just touch on that because that was kind of special because I, I already talked about Vernon, the one that passed away, and she she brought up uh, she she brought up her in this in the comments, and she said she was in the same uh, school that Vernon went, and his her brother was in the same class that Vernon was, so they remember him well, mm. and so that touched us. Not, they were not the only one that touched us. Yeah, Many of the ones that wrote comments touched our hearts. And in fact, we're thankful for everyone that wrote comments. We're just thankful that people were took the time to, to chat down some things and they were so in, encouraging. And then we just want to take this time to, to thank each and every one that, that, that was involved in this here. So this, is, this was especially because she knew I, I couldn't figure out who, who it could have been. I was trying to think who, who, could have, who it could have been, but I could not uh, figure it out until she came to our auction this year and she came up to me and said, said this. And I was, I was just blown away that here is a woman that was the brother to the one that was a classmate of Joe, the Vernon and she knew all about him and went to school with him and it just was a, a special, that's one mentioned in here because that was so special to us that we actually, uh, that they, they were our neighbors and we didn't recognize the name and everything and I just could not figure out who it might it could have been. But when she told me then it made some sense so. I just wanted yeah to I just want to say that dad really enjoys the comments so the more that y'all comment the more dad is going to enjoy it so. He really appreciated the, all the comments from the last video. He, he read all of them and would go back to check if there were any more. So if you guys want to comment, that would be great. Dad, Dad would love to read them. So, yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you again for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And as you know, um, we are we're moving to Alaska, and I guess that for us. For me, that's the hardest thing about leaving, although we're looking forward to it and all the good things that we believe God has in store for us there in that short time we plan on being gone. It's the hardest part is leaving our parents and family here. Um, so that definitely is makes it tough. But I think Dad can probably understand a little bit. Dad was uh, 41 years old, or were he 42? 41. 41 when they moved, left everyone and moved to Montana. So. I think your dad can uh, can understand that a little bit, how that is. Uh, but that does make it hard um, to leave, with, especially with mom being frail and everything. But God will take care of us and, and take care of them, and, and so that's all good. See, my parents came out with us when we moved to Montana. That was a great lift for us. And I would, I would love to go up to Alaska. I've been there for like a half a dozen times already, but... I would just love to go out there, but my wife just wouldn't be able to, to make the trip. So yeah. otherwise, we might even go up there with them for a, for a time, you know. But we we're not go, we're not gonna even think about it. Yeah, I think mom Leona stays here with dad and mom to help take care of 
their needs and helps cook for them and such and helps with the laundry and keep the house clean and everything so we're very grateful for Leona for doing that yes uh, that's a huge huge thing at that so Leona has her own story I know that's different from here but uh, Leona was uh, also married for seven months and then her husband Matthew passed away uh, that was many years ago from cancer so uh, they knew he had cancer um, but they decided there's no time to lose so they decided to get married and were only together seven months until he passed so Leona's been a widow for quite a few years and uh, so she was so kind she's got such a big heart and uh, she's our kids' favorite aunt she does everything for them and she's got a huge heart so she's moved in here with dad and mom moved out of her place to help them so we're just very grateful to her uh, for that so we'll see how long that goes or what but right now that's the that's where she's at the situation with dad and mom so we're thankful for all that uh, but we just uh, want to say thank you for watching this and thank you for watching dad and mom and and thank you for all your love and for your your positive comments and God bless each one of you any final thoughts dad I think it's pretty well covered and I there's so much more I could tell but it just takes too much time and and I just want to again want to thank each and every one that wrote uh, that had comments and I don't I'm not a, a good uh, I don't know how to say this to comment I, I can't text I can't do a lot of things that other people do uh, at my age is I can't even learn it anymore so you got to have some patience with me I'd love to write each one a letter it would take 471 letters and and that probably take all my time that I got left that I can't do anything else so <laughs> if, but uh, nevertheless I appreciate that even though you don't get a don't get a comment from me uh, which I very much have to apologize for that but don't think for one minute that we don't love you just the same and we're just so glad that we have a backing like this it really encourages us I thought this the other video would just just go away like a snowball would would disappear at the 4th of July here in Montana but instead there was 400 to this day there was 471 people that commented on it. I just couldn't believe that. Her, I thought it was going to be a big flop and then, then this happened. So I, I very much appreciate what everybody did for us and it's just, it is again beyond words that 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 people actually thought that this was a, was a good, uh, was worthwhile commenting and I will just uh, leave it at that and let's just thank the Lord for the whole everything. And I'll say this yet, the one reason Dad is still so spry and active is he's he still has got all these projects that he's doing. He uh, still makes apple butter and apple cider. He's got a uh, place here behind the store that he does all that. And last year he raised hogs. How many hogs did you raise? 25. 25 <laughs> hogs, and uh, which is pretty good for, for here. And then this year he got a whole bunch of, he said hogs might not be the thing for this year, so he got a bunch of uh, chickens, uh, the the butcher Cornish cross chickens, to butcher, and so how many of those did you get? Two hundred. I thought you had like three hundred. Did you get three hundred? Oh, oh two hundred. Okay, so two hundred. So Dad's that's Dad's little project right now, taking care of his two hundred chickens. Uh, but anyway, just to let you know that Dad Dad still stays really active. Mom spends a lot of time, actually. Uh, so we just had our auction, and Mom. Every year, as long as I can remember, Mom has made a quilt for the auction. And this year, uh, her quilt was always the top-selling quilt at the auction. And it was again this year because we never know how many more quilts she's got. Um, so you never know if it's going to be the last one. So it was a beautiful quilt, and it, it fetched top dollar at the auction. So that was uh, a real blessing to have Mom's quilt there. And that's what keeps her active is quilting and keeps her mind, you know, her fingers moving and her body moving a little bit so I moved my project close to the house I didn't move them in the kitchen or in the living room but they're right outside the door <laughs> yeah. yeah dad built a special hutch for his chickens right outside the door here so yeah well thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video and God bless each one of you another hill and sometimes a mountain
mountain and another road with rocks that hurt my feet but if Jesus walks along beside me I can take it there shall be no retreat